This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. It is so good to see all of you here this morning, and I welcome those of you who are watching live streaming wherever you are in the United States, and we are grateful for those members of the church who are at home this morning watching this service. I want to again issue now the second public announcement that the annual meeting of this church will be held in this sanctuary next Sunday following the worship service. If you're planning to be here, please have a mask and uh, we will be taking care of the annual business of this congregation and that will follow the worship service. We uh, also this morning, I want to draw your attention to the, <clears throat> the uh, fact that the notices are posted both at Brown Hall and in this sanctuary on the doors regarding the annual meeting and it is uh, in compliance with the bylaws. Secondly, I want to draw your attention that this week I will continue with the sermon series, Five Ways to Find Peace of Mind in Uncertain Times. The, uh, we've sent along the scripture lessons from Luke and Romans, and I've already referenced Psalm 119 this morning. So uh, last week, we talked with you about Jesus and the storm and the boat, and about having the Jesus in the boat of our lives and God in our lives and how we, God is the source of peace. And today, I'm going to be focusing on the role of scripture. Uh, it's not just that we have a Bible, but what do you do with it? And how do you understand it? Because it is an ancient text. So we'll be focused on that this morning. We're grateful that we had a successful bean takeout supper. I'm assuming that's the last of the season, but uh, we're grateful for all who supported that. So now we will continue to prepare ourselves for worship during these stressful days, uncertain times, so much going on. Mr. Friedel, if you would, please. Please join me in the call to worship from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 12, a Psalm of David, and we will read this responsibly. 
Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My life is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. Our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Our first hymn this morning is number 372 in the Pilgrim Hymnal, How Firm a Foundation. Please stand if you are able. I 
inspired by the 32nd Psalm, and we will read this responsibly. Our hearts are blessed as we gather before you today, O Lord, for you have given us freedom from all our transgressions and joy in exchange for heavy hearts. You are the refuge we seek when we are troubled and the courage we need when we venture into our days. Bless us today with your steadfast love as we declare our trust in you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be.
The Psalter reading today is from Psalm 119, verses 1 through 12, and we will read this responsively. Joyful are the people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil, and they only walk in his paths. You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. Our next hymn is number 26 in the red folder, Leaning on Everlasting Arms. Please stand if you are able. today is from the book of Luke chapter 24 verses 44 to 48 then he said I was with you before I told you everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be filled 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. The New Testament scripture lesson is from the book of Romans, chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. We who are strong must be considerate of those who are sensitive about things like this. We must not just please ourselves. We should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. For even Christ didn't live to please himself. As the scriptures say, the insults of those who insult you, O God, have fallen on me. Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us, and the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other, as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to, if you keep the bulletin open to the text, I would first like to draw your attention in the book of Romans, at the end uh, in verse four and, uh, yes, it's verse four. Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. Please note the word teach us. Scriptures teach us. And the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. So the scriptures give us lessons, primarily stories to learn from that should impact us in our living. And not only do they teach us, but they also give us hope and encouragement. Now there are, without getting into it, there are three reasons why we should be reading the Bible. Because the scriptures teach us, the scriptures give us hope, and the scriptures give us encouragement. And when we study and rightly divide or interpret, is a better word, the scriptures, that's what happens. We learn from the stories. We learn not only what we need to know for daily living, which is complex and uncertain, but it gives us hope. And it not only gives us hope, it encourages us. And that's why favorite verses like Psalm 23 or Psalm 91, or the various Psalms in the New Testament give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. Now,
Last week I talked about, and I began this series of five ways to find peace of mind in uncertain times. It doesn't take much for, to establish that we are in uncertain times. The world has always been in uncertain times, but right now it seems like particularly in our nation and in the nations of the world, uh, we are in uncertain times. And then there is not only the state of the nation, but then there is our lives, uh, that we have uncertainties. Some people are struggling with, uh, you know, is, with having more month than money at the end of the month. Some people, we are number one in the state, the state of Maine is number one in all of New England for food insecurity. One in five in Maine are struggling with food insecurity. It's uncertain times. The losses of jobs, 200,000 deaths, almost, I'm sure, close to that, families affected by COVID-19. When will it end? Will it ever get back to normal? These are uncertain times. I don't need to dwell on that because you know that already. But the role of the preacher, according to the book of Romans, is to bring good news. So we've had bad news all week. What on earth? can give us peace of mind through all of this. Last week I talked about Jesus being in the boat. Remember that? And when the storm came, they roused him out of a nap. He'd had a tough day too. I talked about this last week. And he was tired, but he spoke peace and the storm. And so having as the first way to have peace of mind is to make sure that Jesus Christ is in our lives, that we have called upon him, we have invited him, and to let God's peace rule in our hearts. It helps with decision making. When I have to make a decision, I have to ask myself, do I have peace about this decision? Doesn't mean uh, an absence of doubts or an absence of anxiety, but it does mean when I sit quietly, trusting that God through Christ, the Holy Spirit is in my being, do I have peace? If I don't have peace, I wait until I get peace. And if I don't get peace, I know not to do whatever it is. I know it's not right. It may look right. I may have friends say, go for it. But if I don't have peace, if I don't have God's rule of peace in my heart, that little something on the inside which says it's going to be okay, go ahead. Then I wait and I don't do it. I'm grateful that I trust the peace of God. It's the prayer that we prayed this morning, thy will be done. Jesus prayed in his ministry in the garden not, nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. A lot of problems would be eliminated in our personal lives if we waited till we had peace and we said, God, in prayer, guide me. 
You're my heavenly Father. Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, guide me, Father. Give me guidance on how to handle things. Now, uncertain times, Jesus, in, in our lives, I want to now take us to the next step in five ways of establishing peace of mind in uncertain times. And there's a theme to this service, I'm sure you have already picked up on it, and that is what is the role of the Bible? I heard a story one time that uh, a preacher was making house calls. And, you know, you sort of rid up, you know what I mean when I say rid up, you kind of tidy up before the preacher comes and you have little coffee cups out and whatever, but in this household, they, had, they, they were kind of in a panic. They, they were trying to find the Bible to put on the coffee table. <laughs> and when they finally found the Bible, they had to really dust it off because they hadn't been, uh, they hadn't been looking at the Bible very much in, uh, in those times, but they dusted it off and the preacher came in and, uh, and uh, they felt better, but they were not paying too much attention to the Bible. Why is that? Because first of all, there's a lot of downplaying of the Bible Sad to say, in some of our own churches, you have educated clergy who take the Bible and they do what one young theologian did who had his first church. And I'll illustrate it this way. Every time he had an old sainted woman in his church, and every time the young preacher got up and said, well, the Bible says this, but really we know that's not the case. The Bible is sort of full of myths and stories and whatever, but it's not, it's not important. He had a low view of the Bible that's destroyed mainline Christianity. The founders of this church uh, Reverend uh, Blood and others had a high view of the scriptures. But you know, people go to seminary, as I have, and uh, some of them come out with worse for the wear, with a low view of the scriptures. One, they're not that important. Two, it's more important to emphasize the things we want to emphasize, like politics, or telling people how to vote, or doing various things, when that's not in the Bible. What is in the Bible is a message of hope and encouragement and even Jesus is better understood through the scriptures. So this young preacher, now I'm going to go back to house calls. There was another young preacher that every time he stood in the pulpit, he said, this is not really supposed to be important. And he disregarded something. And the old saint woman, woman who was like a saint in the church, would go home and she took her Bible and she cut it out. Whatever the verses were, she just cut them out with scissors and took them out. Well, that went on for a couple of years and one day he got around to making a call on her and he said to her, may I see your family Bible? And she took it out and handed it to him and he opened it up and it was a mess. He said, what have you done to the Bible? 
She said, I did what you did. Every time you said not to regard the Bible with any seriousness, I cut it out. And he looked at it and he hung his head. It was a lesson for him. She was wise. She showed him you can't just mess with the scriptures. Now, yes, we need to properly interpret the Old Testament. And some things are relevant to Israel and laws. But this Bible reveals Jesus to us. You say, how do you know that? Now let's look at the Luke text. Jesus said, this is post-resurrection. He's with the disciples in an upper room. They're scared to death for their own lives. He appears to them and he says, when I was with you before, I told you everything written about me. I want you to notice this. Everything written about me in the law of Moses. That's the Torah. That's the first five books of the Bible. Everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets. Well, the major prophets and the minor prophets are the large body of the Old Testament scriptures. Major because the books are, they're called major because the books are longer. Minor because the books are shorter. Not, it's not about unimportance and importance. Jesus said, I've told you everything about me before from the Old Testament, from the prophets. They did not have a New Testament yet. Hadn't been written. Everything written about me, Jesus, in the law, in the prophets, and in the Psalms. For example, in Psalm 22, we hear the psalmist talking about the, the Messiah that would suffer. And in Psalm 22, we hear the familiar words that Jesus quotes on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Psalm 22 was written about Jesus. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. What did Jesus say? There are seven I am's in the gospel of John. And one of the I am's is this. I am the good shepherd. So when we read these things in the Old Testament scriptures, they reveal Jesus. Why should we re read the Bible? Because they teach us about Jesus. Everything about Jesus in the Old Testament is concealed. Everything in the New Testament about Jesus is revealed. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. We need to take this book seriously. Not everything is literal. We're not supposed to pluck our eyes out or cut off our limbs. We need to understand those things and what they meant culturally. But we need to also understand this is not a funny book. This is not just like any other book. In fact, it is the most important book. It was the first book printed on Gutenberg's printing press. It's the reason we have public education and literacy. Because in England and in Germany, Martin Luther Believe solo scriptura, only the scriptures. 
and that the people had a right to read the word of God from themselves. And in the history of congregationalism and other Protestant denominations, Anglican, Episcopalian, Baptist, all of those denominations which were later formed out of Reformation were founded upon literacy so that the people would know how to read the Bible for themselves. It is not a book just to be dusted off and take care when someone starts minimizing the importance of the Bible. If there's anything I can get you to do is please read even the scriptures that I send you in my memo in preparation for the worship service because they give us not only teaching, but thank God they give us hope. They give us encouragement. He goes on in 45. Look at the text. It's in your bulletin. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. The scriptures are head and heart. We read earlier from Psalm 119, verse 11. I learned this verse in vacation Bible school many decades ago. I learned it in the King James translation. I will hide thy word in mine heart that I might not sin against God. The scriptures help me to live right. Psalm 119, if you want a, a psalm to begin with, is a beautiful psalm. Every one of the 176 verses are in reference to the Word of God. The Word of God. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word will never pass away. I know there are doubting skeptics in pulpits, but this is not a pulpit that is that inclined, so inclined and in the history of this church. This word of God is taken seriously and we work and find hope and lessons from it. He opened their minds and that's what we pray as you open the Bible, say, open my mind, open my heart, teach me, O God. The Holy Spirit has been given to us to teach us and lead us into truth. And believe me, there is truth and there is error. And when anyone takes on a pulpit and a ministry, one of the most important questions for the free church to remember in the search process is what is your view of the scriptures? Who is Jesus? Important questions. I heard a great story told by an Episcopalian one time, an uh, Episcopalian priest, I think it was, who said, Jesus is like buttoning a sweater. If you don't get the button right at the top, no matter how much in order you, are, you button your sweater after that, you're still going to be off. I've done that, have you? <laughs> Missed the first, and I have to go back and do the whole thing over again. Theologically, what I'm saying to you this morning is we've got to get Jesus right. And that's like getting the first button, as that Episcopalian priest said, in the right slot first. The right opening. Who is Jesus? Jesus is not just a nice guy. Jesus is not just a great teacher among many other world teachers like Buddha and Muhammad and all the others. Jesus is the Son of God, virgin born, lived a holy life, died a vicarious death for our sins, 
And on the third day he rose again, literally from the dead, as the scriptures said. Look at verse 46. Jesus says to the disciples, yes, it was written long ago. You see that long ago, he's referring to the Old Testament scriptures, that the Messiah would suffer. I'm in Luke 46. That the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead. It's wonderful that Jesus died for our sins. But as St. Paul so, so said in the scriptures, if he didn't rise from the dead, we would be most hopeless. But we don't have to fear death because Jesus died and rose again. And he said to you and to me in the scriptures, because I live, you shall live also. And when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death and time is slipping between our fingers like the sands of the beach on the ocean. Let me tell you, I want to make sure my shepherd is close to me. I want to make sure that my life is dependent, trusting in what I have been taught. As Paul wrote to Timothy, from a child thou hast been taught the holy scriptures, which has made thee wise unto salvation. The Messiah would suffer, die, and rise from the dead on the third day. That's Easter. And it was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins to all who's turning, and you are witnesses of these things. We need the Bible. In a moment of distress and uncertainty, we can find peace and hope and encouragement and lessons from the Bible. When I was about five years old, my family was helping in a church in Hartford, Connecticut. And it's amazing what comes back to me as I age. But I was about five years old and there was this trio that got up and sang a song and I never forgot it. In times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. That word anchor is found in the book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verses 18 and 19. It talks about our hope being in Christ, who is our anchor. And when the storms of life hit us, when bad diagnoses come for our health, reports. When we suffer losses, when we have personal fears, our anchor needs to hold. The second verse says, the, the second verse says, in times like these, you need the Bible. Now I realize there are some churches They just beat people over the head with the Bible. That's not why the Bible was intended. It's to give us lessons and hope and encouragement and guidance and peace. In times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. You want to make it through life, you need to be anchored. I'm not talking about confirmation. I'm not talking about church membership. I'm not talking about what is the name of the building you enter as a Christian church. I'm saying our rock is on Jesus. And when the storms come, 
like they hit Louisiana and Alabama this week. Let me tell you, the storms of life can hit us also. And our anchor holds when we grip solidly the solid rock, which is Christ. That was 61, almost 62, almost 62 years. Who's counting? 62 years ago, I heard that. What an impression on me, remembering that as a five-year-old child, these three women, one of them was named Faith. I'm not sure who the other two were. Friends of the family got up and sang this trio. Now, I'm going to pull up Paul Harvey and tell you the rest of the story. I was in seminary years and years ago. The early 70s was the first time. And uh, there was a nice couple I met in a Christian bookstore. And they took a shine to me. You know what I mean by took a shine to me. They liked me. So they invited me over for dinner. And they were very good to me. And uh, I didn't go home on break that year. So I spent Thanksgiving with them. And they took me to their church. And this song came to our attention in times like these. And uh, the minister of the church said, Bert Jones, Reverend Bert Jones, said, my mother wrote that hymn. I said, you're kidding. Ruth C. Jones was your mother, yes. And they were all gospel ministers in, in the church there in Pennsylvania. In times like these, my memory went back to my time of five years of age when I first heard this. But that's not the most important part of the story that I heard it first when I was five. Yay for you. No, no, that's not why I'm telling it. It's not even that I met the children of the person who wrote this. The most important thing I'm trying to say to you this morning is that this is what guides my life. My trust in times like these in 2020 is Jesus Christ my Savior, my Lord, who gives me peace. Mr. Friedel is going to play this on the organ one time through, then I'll invite those of you who are able to turn to page 79 in the red folder, and we shall sing this together. Mr. Friedel, would you play it completely through before we stand? <laughs> stand and sing it now in times like these you need a savior in times like these you need an anchor be very sure be very sure your anchor the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's 
the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid. is Jesus, yes, he's the one, this rock is Jesus, the only one, be very sure, very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid in times like these, I have a Savior. In times like these, I have an anchor. I'm very sure. I'm very sure. My anchor holds grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one. Be very sure. Be very sure. You're Anchor holes and grips rock. Thank you. You may be seated. We'll now go to prayers. Are there any praise reports you would like to give? Lori, I think you had a report or something. Yes, my um, niece's husband, his father is home from the hospital and doing well. Unfortunately, his uncle is not, and they don't know how much longer his uncle has to live. Right. So we'll continue to pray for the family as we did last week. And I think their names, I hope, were added to the prayer list. Yes, they were. Please, whether you take your bulletin, I know I'm all for recycling, but take your bulletin because it has names to people to pray for. It has the scriptures we've covered and various things and how to get a hold of me if you need to, and whatever. So be, feel free to take that home uh, so that you have it. Are there other praise reports this morning? Good news. Well, we're working on it. I gave you some good news this morning. Scriptures will give you peace. That's what I was covering, right? The scriptures will give you peace. All right, we're going to pray and remember those who are on the prayer list as well and those who are in assisted living situations, Edwina Lindsay particularly, and Mary Pearson, two members of this church. We also want to remember our, who is at home, Kathy Hamburger this morning. Let's keep praying for her healing and recovery. All right, let us pray. Our Father, we thank you that the scriptures give us hope. They teach us and encourage us. We thank you in times like these we have a Savior. In times like these we have a Bible 
help us this week. And for those who have never invited Christ to rule in their hearts, in the quietness of this moment, may they do so. Come in, take charge, Lord Jesus. Let your peace rule my life. Your word guide me. The lessons of the scriptures help me to understand God more. We pray for those who, that are on the, the prayer list we lift them up. And then for those who have gathered here this morning, many things in our hearts that we do not talk about. We're not ready to talk about. Be with us. For those this morning who are watching by way of the internet, bless the children of this church, oh God. May it come a time when it is safe again for all of us to gather on this, these holy grounds in this holy sanctuary which is dedicated to the worship of God and the preaching of the gospel. We pray for our nation. We pray for those who have lost homes and lives and loved ones on the west coast and the fires for those in the southern part of the nation who have been just again hit not with storms and hurricanes and things that are so disruptive. We pray for our nation. We don't know what to say, O oh God, much other than thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven for the United States of America. And may we have peace in our hearts this morning. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. At this time, the, offertory is, the offering is usually received. The receptacles are in the back of the church. If you know someone that is hearing impaired, we are now wired for wireless hearing assistance ask someone in, in the, that's serving in the back and they will be glad to show you that next time you come to worship. We're grateful for all of these things and for these gifts. I invite us now to stand for the doxology. Thank you for those of you who are faithful in your giving through the mail. We will make it through all of this. Thank you for your support. Let us stand and Laurie will lead us after the doxology in the prayer of dedication. join me in the prayer of dedication we'll read this in unison we are grateful O oh God for all of life's blessings we offer unto thee these gifts with our heartfelt love and praise may our lives be a blessing to others in our home family community and world through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray amen the hymn of benediction is number 42 in the red folder, The Lord's Prayer.
trust that this worship service has encouraged you, given you hope in these uncertain times. Make sure Jesus is in your life and then ask him to show you to understand the Bible and read it. I'm going to pronounce the benediction in a moment as Moses blessed Israel. The sung response to the benediction is go now in peace. Following the sung response, I'm going to invite you to do what we did last week, as many as are able, to sit back down and listen to the postlude that, that uh, I almost gave you a doctorate, Mr. Friedel, that Mr. Friedel, who has every worthy reason to have a doctorate, <laughs> has prepared for us. I invite you to sit and listen to the postlude if you, have, if you are able before we exit this morning. And it's been a joy to be with you this morning, to see all of you. Your very presence is an encouragement to this preacher's heart. God bless you and God bless those who are watching by way of the internet. And now, as Moses blessed Israel, I bless you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.
the postlude, if you please. Amen. Have a great week, folks.